There's kind of like this, this attitude in the trans community that if you question your transition, that makes you insane. In just one moment, we're gonna be speaking with Helena Kirshner. She's a 23-year-old woman who went through a year and a half of testosterone treatments for gender transition before deciding it was a mistake. We'll get her entire story in just a moment. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Helena, thanks so much for joining the show. It's great to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. So let's talk about your experiences. We've been told by the media that gender transition is easy, that it's kind of like the snitch star on, star off machine. That basically everything is hunky dory, and that only not only is it hunky dory that hormone treatments, hormone replacements, surgeries, all this basically fixes all of the underlying problems. Uh, you're somebody who not only went through transition, went through detransition as well. Can you tell your story? How did, how did this first occur? What, what, when did the thought of transitioning first occur to you? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, it was more of kind of a gradual process, almost of indoctrination. So it began around the time I was 15. I was going through a period in my life where I just didn't have a lot of friends. Um, I was, you know, about to switch schools, coming into high school. And I started relying on the internet a lot for just my day to day activities. I, um, I would just kind of you know, I just had gotten a smartphone actually. And I was just sitting on the smartphone all day at school. And then I would come home, I would open my laptop and I would just go back to browsing social media. And um, it was in that kind of environment that I was introduced to a lot of um, gender ideology, but also just kind of like leftist woke ideology as well. Um, I grew up in a more kind of like you know, mainstream Republican home. Um, and so I was introduced to these ideas. And in order to really fit in socially, um, which I really wanted to do since I didn't have many friends in real life, I had to adopt these kind of like leftist beliefs. And um, in that context, I was learning a lot about how like white people are evil, cis people are evil, straight people are evil. And then on top of that, there was also messages telling me, well, if you feel like you don't fit in, that means you're trans. If you feel like you don't like your body, that means you're trans. If you feel like other girls don't understand you, that means you're trans. Um, and so it was kind of like that convergence of those two uh, lines of messaging that really led me to start thinking like, hey, well, maybe if I just change my pronouns, that'll give me an indication of if that's right for me. And then, you know, you get those messages back at you that it's like, yes, you need to change your pronouns. Gender questioning is good. That's how you discover yourself. And by the way, only trans people question their gender. So if you're questioning your gender, that means that you're trans. So it was like, I, I kind of like began like that. And then it was a process of about two years where I just kept kind of like going further and further down that rabbit hole. I would change my pronouns, get a ton of positive affirmation. And then after a while, I would say like, hmm, you know, I'm still uncomfortable with myself. I want to go a little bit further, kind of subconsciously thinking this way. Um, so then I would like cut my hair, for example, and then tons of positive affirmation. I might change my pronouns again, tons of positive affirmation. And after kind of like two years of going down a rabbit hole like that, I ended up thinking, oh, well, I was actually meant to be a boy and I need to transition. So it wasn't like one day I just woke up and started believing that. It was kind of like this long process of being very detached from reality and not having a lot of social influences in real life to um, challenge or, or push back against some of the things I was learning online. So during this period, I mean, what, what we've seen in, in a lot of these cases is that it's young women who are predominantly already suffering from depression and anxiety and are looking for sort of an excuse for why they are suffering for or justification for why they're suffering from depression and anxiety. Do you think that you were suffering from depression or anxiety during this period when you started kind of going down this internet rabbit hole? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and another thing that was really major for me and I know is also major for other young girls is um, like body image issues. So I had started you know, um, my family was very involved in the beauty industry. So I kind of grew up with a lot of, you know, messages about, you know, like what, you know, body types are, you know, the best and, and all this kind of stuff. So I started having body image issues at a very young age. And I, in retrospect, looking back, I really believe that um, I was struggling so much with that. And then I got these messages from the internet saying, oh, that's all because you were born in the wrong body. Like you don't have these body image issues because 
of your environment or anything else. You have them because you were born in the wrong body. And if you change your body through testosterone and surgeries and all this kind of stuff, um, then you will no longer feel so uncomfortable in your body. And that was a very um, seductive message to me because I was just so deeply struggling with that. We'll get to more with Helena in just one moment. First, surveillance is only increasing. There are a lot of people who want your data. And to help your data from being tracked, I urge you to get ExpressVPN. It doesn't matter where you live. Every time you search for something online, watch a video, or click a link, it all gets tracked by three-letter agencies, by big tech or both. Anytime they want, they can match your activity to your true identity using your device's unique IP address. But when I turn ExpressVPN on, they can't see my IP address at all. My identity is anonymized by a secure VPN server. Plus, ExpressVPN encrypts 100% of my internet data for protection from any eavesdroppers or cyber criminals. The best part is ExpressVPN makes it so easy I even have my mom using it. The app literally has one button. You open it up on your phone or computer. You hit that big on button to connect. That is it. You are protected. Open it up. Right now, it says not connected. But behold, it is now connected. It turned green. That means that I am protected. So stop handing over your data to the government and big tech companies. Defend your rights with the same VPN I use. Visit expressvpn.com slash benyt. Get three extra months free or click the link in my description below. Again, expressvpn.com slash benyt. Get three extra months free. Click the link in the description below. Uh, so well, while you were kind of in the, in the first couple of years that you were moving down this path, what, what did your parents know and were they aware of any of this and how did they react? So for that kind of two year ish period that I told you about where I was just going deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, they had no idea. Um, and it was only once I had decided, oh, I was born in the wrong body. I need to transition. Um, that's when I decided to come out and tell them about my intentions. Um, but we, we kind of didn't really have, uh, you know, a relationship where we really like talked about what was going on with us. So the way I did it was just you know, I just came out and said, like, I'm a boy, you either call me a boy or, you know, we don't talk and I'm going to go on testosterone because I was about to turn 18. So it wasn't really like a, like back and forth conversation. It was just kind of like, I just put this in front of my parents and my mom, um, well, I put it in front of my mom and she, you know, understandably was quite shocked at this uh, assertion that I was going to, you know, transition into a boy. And she, she kind of like shut down a little bit and it was really difficult. It was a really difficult time in our relationship. So you decided that you wanted to get testosterone treatment. How did you go about obtaining the testosterone? Yeah. So, um, it's actually pretty ironic because at the time I had these beliefs where it's like, Oh, we live in such a transphobic society. It's going to be so hard to get testosterone, but once I actually went through it, it was incredibly easy. I just made an appointment at a Planned Parenthood and I went there and it was one about hour long appointment. Um, I talked to a social worker for maybe 20 minutes and then I talked to a nurse practitioner for another maybe 20 minutes and then they like cleared me for everything and helped me do my first injection. So there was no actual medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria. There was no actual psychological screening or anything like that. You basically walked in, you said you wanted testosterone and they gave it to you. Yeah. Um, and again, ironically, they diagnosed me with an endocrine disorder. They didn't even diagnose me with gender dysphoria. Um, they, on my medical records, it says I have a diagnosis of an endocrine disorder and that's why I needed the testosterone. So, um, yeah, very, very strange, but no, no psychological evaluation or diagnosis of gender dysphoria or anything just kind of like walked in. Okay. So you started off taking the testosterone and, uh, was it relatively low dosage or high dosage and what effect did it have on you? Yeah. So, um, another, uh, interesting part of this story is that when I sat down with that nurse practitioner and she began to kind of talk to me about, um, you know, the dosage that we were going to do, she suggested a rather low dose to start out with. Um, but me being in that kind of, you know, poor body image headspace, I told her, you know, I think that I have extra estrogen because my hips are big. So I think I need more testosterone. And she didn't push back against that at all. She pretty much just agreed and said like, okay, well, where would you like to start? And then I said like, how high can we go? And she suggested, you know, a much higher dosage. And so I actually ended up starting at a hundred milligrams of testosterone per week, which when you look at the kind of um, guidelines that various healthcare providers have for this, um, that is kind of usually the higher end of the dosage. So I went from being just like an 18 year old 
female to having a hundred milligrams of testosterone in my body, um, all in one day. And what were the effects on you physiologically of, of taking that much testosterone? I didn't end up having very many physical changes, but I had a lot of very intense psychological effects that happened to me. Um, so obviously, you know, you have like the sex drive aspect, that's a really big aspect of it. And for me, that was incredibly overwhelming. I had a very difficult time with that. I, you know, I'm a kind of more physically reserved person and I had never dated anyone before. So it was just, that was extremely, you know, overwhelming for me. I was not prepared for that at all. Um, and then in addition to that, I had emotional changes that, you know, I kind of describe it as at first it was just a lot of irritability. And I just felt on edge all the time. I felt like I was just jumping out of my skin all the time, restlessness, irritability. And then as the months progressed about a year into it, it turned into this kind of um, feeling where I didn't have emotions anymore. It was just like, anytime I felt anything, whether, you know, it might've been sadness or frustration that would just kind of immediately turn into rage. And so I was, I just felt completely out of control of myself. Um, I was spiraling down into just like dysfunction and, um, just really living an unhealthy life. And, you know, these rage attacks would get so bad that I just, I felt like I really had to externalize it. It's not that I wanted to hurt anybody, but when I would be overcome with this, like I wanted to like break something, I wanted to like hit something. And so being, you know, this person who was completely unprepared for these feelings, I kind of ended up taking it out on myself and I ended up hurting myself pretty badly a couple of times. And one of those times actually led to me having to go to the hospital. Um, and when I got to the hospital, they, you know, checked me into a psychiatric unit. Um, so that it was just a incredibly dark, difficult time of my life that I do not wish on anyone. So you, know, you you do these testosterone treatments for months on end. And how far did you get in the actual transition process before you decided, you know, this is the wrong way for me? Yeah. So I was on the testosterone for about a year and a half, um, which is not a very long time. It usually takes, um, I mean, everybody's body is different, but for most people, you don't start getting more, you know, uh, I guess, extreme physical changes until a little bit longer on testosterone. So thankfully for me now, um, I was not on it for a very long time, only a year and a half. Um, and then, uh, I never got any surgeries or anything. And, um, about a year and a half in, I, that's when I kind of had my realization after a couple of months of doubts, that's when I had my realization that it was all a mistake. Like everything from those first pronoun changes on social media, that was all a mistake. And so what was that like when, when, when you went back to your parents, you said, listen, I've been living, you know, in a way that I'm, I'm think is, is not right for me. I, I made some bad decisions along the way. When you went back to your social group, how, how was that? Because as you've been discussing, particularly on the internet, uh, there, there are these social groups that form where every change that you make away from sort of traditional gender uh, is seen as something worthy of cheering. So there must've been an enormous amount of blowback when you said, well, you know what, I, I think this is wrong and I'm actually a biological woman and, and I'm gendered as a woman. So I think part of it, actually, part of my ability to desist from this ideology was the fact that I had stopped using the internet so much. So I had gradually been, because my life was so dysfunctional, I just didn't feel like posting on social media anymore. And I was just kind of in my own world. And I think being separated from all of these like social reinforcements and messages that you see online allowed me to kind of think and eventually come to the conclusion that, you know, I wasn't trans. Um, so in that sense, when I detransitioned, I didn't have that immediate social circle to blow back at me, but I did go back to a social media account that I had and announced that, you know, I was no longer transitioning. And I said that my, my beliefs about gender issues had evolved. Um, and when I made that post, that's when I got some blowback. I had some old friends that at one point were very close to me, but we hadn't talked in, in maybe a couple of months actually messaged me like you're a disgusting person. I'm so disappointed in how you turned out. You've gone insane. Um, because there's kind of like this, this attitude in the trans community that if you question your transition, that makes you insane. So I was kind of getting like those kinds of accusations as well. So it was very difficult, but, um, I do think that 
you know, not having all of those social reinforcements there in the first place is what allowed me to begin to unpack my beliefs. So, you know, obviously uh, you've now detransitioned. You're no longer taking testosterone. Were there any long-term effects uh, or midterm effects of, of the bouts of testosterone that you were taking? And how is life now, now that you've decided to move in the other direction? Um, so life is definitely so much better. Um, like I said, it was an incredibly dysfunctional time in my life. And none of the mental health care providers that I saw, because I saw many, uh, ever put together that maybe the testosterone was part of the reason that I was you know, having such extreme mental health symptoms, it went beyond depression and body image issues. Like I had as a teenager, um, it, it turned into just something completely extreme. Um, so definitely not dealing with any of that stuff anymore. I'm, you know, I'm growing into myself. It's all good. Um, but I didn't really have any long-term medical effects, thankfully, but that's not the norm. Um, there are a lot of women, you know, especially who are on testosterone for a little bit longer than I would be, who begin to have major reproductive issues. They might require a hysterectomy. That means that you're infertile for life and are a medical patient for life. Um, so that's not uncommon. And, you know, there are a lot of young women and young boys, obviously, who are really rushed into surgeries and pushed into surgeries. I know so many young people who are at you know, the age of 15, 16, 17, 18, already had double mastectomies or orchiectomies, which is removal of the testicles. Um, so that is, you know, very extreme. Those are extreme long-term effects. So I consider myself very, very, very lucky that I managed to escape this ideology and this medical system relatively unscathed, but many people my age can't say the same. So what advice would you have for 15, 14, 13 year old girls who are really having body image issues, depression, anxiety? We, we now know uh, from a wide variety of research, actually, that rapid onset gender dysphoria is a thing that very often groups of girls reinforcing one another tend to transition in, in groups. And, and there is pretty significant social pressure uh, for, for people to start seeking transitional treatment without an, even a formal diagnosis of gender dysphoria. So what, what sort of advice would you have to young girls who are struggling and suffering? I'm not sure if there would be any advice that I could have to a young person in that situation that would really, you know, be listened to or heard because when I was that age, it was very much, um, the, the trans ideology is a very authoritarian and manipulative ideology. Some describe it as a cult. I would be inclined in that way as well. Um, so I just don't know if there's anything I could say to like a 13 year old, they're just going to call me a fascist. So um, my message usually goes out to parents. And if you have a parent, if you're a parent and you have a 13, 14 year old who's going through this, one, don't write it off as just, it's just a phase. They're going to grow out of it because I mean, surely they will when they're in their twenties, but there's a lot um, of time in between 13 and 20 where, you know, there's, there's so much manipulation. There's so many dangers involved in this. So really parents need to become informed. Parents need to get in touch with other parents. And one really good way to do that is an organization that I'm a part of. It's called Genspect, G-E-N-S-P-E-C-T. Um, they're, they're on Twitter and at genspec.org. Um, that's an organization of parents and professionals who you know, help to support parents going through this. So I really think that um, parents need to get informed, get those resources, get support so that they can help their young child navigate this because it's really up to the parents to step in and protect their child from these outside influences that are pushing them towards radical, permanent body modifications. Well, Helena, thank you so much for your time. And uh, thanks for your bravery in telling your story because it, it is not easy for people who detransition to, uh, to talk about it these days. Social media will crack down on you. People will call you a bigot for having made a choice about your own life that is in consonance with, with natural biology. So really appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you.